Friends, we have a wonderful passage today, verses 8 through 10 in 1 Samuel chapter 3, if you've got your Bibles and want to open those. And we, we, the Lord has been calling to Samuel in the night. It's a dramatic moment when, when Samuel's being spoken to. It's going to shift the tenor of his life. But there's a problem. He's not recognizing God's voice. Let's listen again for God's work. So the Lord called Samuel again. Uh, having spoken to him, and you may rem remember how the sequence works. God speaks to Samuel, he calls out to him. Samuel says, here I am, but he's thinking it's Eli calling from another room. He runs in, wakes up this old temple functionary, and, and, and Eli says, didn't call you, go back to sleep. It was just a dream, you were imagining it. The little boy goes back, lies down, again God calls. Again he goes, wakes up Eli. Again he's sent back to bed. It's becoming almost farcical now. And, and, and it's going to happen one more time. The Lord called Samuel again a third time. He got up, went to Eli, and said, Here I am, Eli, you called me. Eli perceived, finally, that the Lord was calling the boy. And he said to Samuel, You must go and lie down. And if God calls you, you shall say, Speak, speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. It's a wonderful way to begin your prayer, isn't it? Your prayer time, your quiet time with God. Speak, Lord, your servant is listening. So Samuel went and lay down in his place, and the Lord came and stood there and called him, just like he had before. Samuel, Samuel, God is persistent. And he said, speak, for your servant is listening. You know, this event is an, a singular event in the life of Samuel, but it's also what we call a paradigmatic event. Do you know what that is? Something that's paradigmatic is something that sets a pattern for us. It's a pattern event. And this voice, this event, is a pattern of the fact that we're not alone in the task of recognizing God's voice. And that's a great relief. It doesn't depend just on us. Samuel represents the, the person who God wants to connect with and speak to, and Eli, the community of faith. Eli represents the community around that person. It's through Eli that Samuel hears God. It's, it's Eli that identifies that voice as God's voice. It's Eli that encourages the right response of Samuel. Because God waits, doesn't he? He just doesn't go babbling on knowing that Samuel doesn't know who he is. He waits until he, he, he's, he's sure that, that Samuel is receptive and ready to hear him and recognizes who he is. And so, um, the community of faith plays this wonderful role of helping us to know that God is addressing us and to help us discover what he's saying. There's, there's a, a practice of distinguishing God's voice, and we're blessed because we live, unlike Eli and, and Samuel, at, at a, on the other side of the great event where Jesus came and spoke with us. The author of the Hebrews makes it very clear that God was speaking before Jesus came. In many and various ways, he says, God spoke to us before, but now he has spoken to us personally through his son. And so we get to, we get to ha hear the stories that Jesus shared. We get to see the commandments that he gave. We get to see the questions people asked him, how he responded. And in all those ways, we are getting a, a, a much clearer and more concrete picture of God's voice. Because God is not going to speak now in ways that, that are contrasting or different than he spoke through Jesus. It's the same voice. Hmm? And that's helpful because we now have many clues, if, we're, if we become familiar with, with Scripture, with Christ, about, about how God is going to speak to us, what he's going to say, and what this helps us distinguish that voice. And that's good because it means that the religious life is not one series of random moments of intuition after another. And let's face it, we hear a lot of voices. We have sales voices. We have the voices of contemporaries urging us to do this or that. We have bosses' voices. We have, we have parental voices and children's voices. We have voices all around us of people that are trying to get our attention, trying to get us to do things or believe things. So this business of learning to distinguish the voice of God is important. We need to learn as individuals. And then often when we're in doubt, we have to call on others in our community who can also help us read the scriptures and who, who are wise in listening to God and who know us and, and to whom we can trust to help us distinguish God's actual direction. Let's take a moment and pray. We're grateful for all the people in our lives that have helped us to understand 
and pay attention to and discern your voice from all the other voices in our lives, Lord. Help us to be those that, that kind of person for others who need someone to help them. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen.